Hello and welcome to Cherry Beckert's Industrial Industry Podcast. My name is Matt Brady and I am Cherry Beckert's Industrial Industry Leader. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those of you that are return uh, listeners, uh, welcome back. Happy to have you join us again. And for our new listeners, uh, welcome. We look forward to sharing some insights here on what is uh, number five in our recent podcast series around the recently passed uh, CHIPS Act, uh, as well as the uh, interaction with CHIPS Act and IRA of 2022. Um, uh, Again, thank you for joining. Uh, We're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive today into new ways to monetize uh, the the credits themselves uh, related to the CHIPS Act. And again, that interaction with IRA of 2022. Um, One quick housekeeping note I'll share is, again, for the newer listeners, uh, as I noted, this is number five, so we have done four previously. Uh, those are all available on our website at www.cbh.com. So please feel free to go back and listen to those. We would we would certainly recommend that. And and also, uh, as we wrap today, we'll note some, some trailing podcasts that we're going to do on this very topic, as well as others to come. Um, so with that, and without further ado, I will introduce uh, our guest today, Ron Wainwright, Again, Ron has been on the previous four podcasts, as well as many others that our firm does. So to returning listeners would be a familiar a familiar voice. So um, Ron is a partner in our strategic tax advisory practice. And, and in particular around trip, uh, CHIPS has become our uh, resident expert. So Ron, welcome. Thank you, Matt. And uh, thank you to our listeners. Uh, it's good to be back with you. And uh, we hope you will find today's discussion in regards to a deeper dive into monetizing energy credits, uh, very informational. Um, so uh, look forward to uh, our conversation, Matt. Yeah, same here, Ron. And I know uh, I know for the first four, uh, we've we've shared a variety. It's really around new ways to monetize these energy credits. So, um, Ron, with that, uh, maybe it's maybe it's a good level set here to uh, give a little bit of background on uh, again, part of what we previously spoke about, but really the foundation for the CHIPS Act in combination with I- IRA of 2022, and again, your your observations as you've gone through those pieces of legislature. Uh, yes, Matt, thank you. Uh, so as we started our podcast series, uh, we started with uh, creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductors for America, which is commonly called the CHIPS Act, which, as we know, was signed into law on, on August 9th uh, by President Biden. Um, and then ultimately, we are now talking in our podcast series about the Inflation Reduction Act of, of 2022. Now, I would point out to you that if you recall, as uh, for our prior listeners, uh, the CHIPS Act brought us the the new Advanced Manufacturing Investment Tax Credit, which is a significant opportunity uh, with respect to our industrial clients. Um, And we'll talk today about a number of areas in the Inflation Reduction Act, and more specifically do a deeper dive into how can industrial uh, clients take advantage of these two major pieces of legislation. So, Let's talk a little bit about the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, candidly, it is a game changer. Uh, so on August 16th, uh, followed just on August 9th uh, by the signing of the CHIPS Act, uh, the president signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Uh, we'll refer to it as the act in our podcast. But it has significant implications for not only the renewable energy industry, clean energy industry, but also for the industrial industry. And that's what we want to focus on today. So a couple highlights uh, for our listeners as we've gone through four podcasts today. Probably the most notable areas uh, within the Inflation Reduction Act beyond the monetization and direct pay or transferable credits is is really a number of areas. So uh, significant a focus on restoring restoring the current renewable energy, uh, Section 45, or or what's called the production tax credit, and Section 48, which is referred to as the investment uh, tax credit, um, and and that's very important to understand in regards to manufacturers because there's an element uh, within uh, the both pieces of legislation that our industrial clients can take advantage of, um, specifically in expanding. Uh, their facilities uh, to ensure that they are taking advantage of 
all of the various uh, what we'll call components, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, that ultimately are going to go into the renewable energy, as well as the advanced manufacturing ITC when we talk about uh, semiconductors or, or chips. So, um, you know, there's also in 2025 uh, a concept of technology neutral tax credit systems, which uh, industrial clients can take advantage of. And so there's just a significant amount, uh, both in the CHIPS Act and the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, that hopefully we've covered in, in the first four and will continue uh, in this series along with another two. That, that's helpful, Ron, and certainly, again, gives gives some of that, uh, both the observations as well as that that foundation. So, you know, being that this is is the fifth in our series, uh, you know, can you give some highlights of the implications to manufacturers, in particular related to the investment tax credit, so 48C, and the production tax credit, 45X? Uh, absolutely. And so uh, when you think about the investment tax credit, uh, really, it's been coined for clean energy manufacturing facilities. Uh, remember uh, that that came underneath the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which actually established a 30% tax credit, which is referred to as the 480C credit. And it was awarded competitively and had a cap on the funding that was authorized for these credits. Um, so now the Inflation Reduction Act really re invigorates the investment tax credit for clean energy manufacturing facilities, i.e. the 48C credit, and provides $10 billion of new funding for this program and expands the categories of qualifying energy technologies uh, with the goal of really building a, a robust manufacturing capacity to supply clean energy uh, with respect to the economy. And so when we think about uh, categories of, of qualifying manufacturing and, and recycling projects. Um, those are those that produce electric and fuel cell vehicles and their components, along with refueling uh, infrastructure, renewable energy equipment and components, and renewable fuels, uh, energy storage equipment and components, energy conservation products, grid monetization equipment and carbon capture, transport and storage equipment. So you begin to see the impact on the industrial industry in regards to they're the ones who manufacture all of these areas that will ultimately uh, drive us as an economy uh, towards more uh, capacity to supply these, these clean energy uh, economies. And so that's really what is referred to as 48C. Now, when we think about the advanced manufacturing production credit, similar purpose to 48C of really building a robust domestic manufacturing capacity to supply the clean energy economy. And so that's where the Inflation Reduction Act includes a, a new alternative section, 45X, for advanced manufacturing production tax credit. And so the production tax credit really requires production in the U.S. and sell to unrelated third parties. But it is a tax credit that is for all qualified components and minerals requiring no competition among the projects. So when you think about an array of solar energy and battery and wind energy components, uh, along with those critical mineral production, which qualify for this production uh, credit. So, you know, this Section 45X production tax credit is, is really not subject also to what we've discussed in some prior a podcast around what's referred to as the prevailing wage or the apprenticeship requirements. And the other thing I'd like to kind of highlight, because this is often from what we are interfacing with our clients being overlooked, is also industrial industry taxpayers taking advantage of tax credits for hydrogen and, and carbon capture. Um, and so everyone seems to be focused uh, more directly on energy production. Um, the tax credits in the Inflation Reduction Act for hydrogen and carbon capture uh, likewise are relevant to manufacturers. So there are new generous credits for clean hydrogen production. It is on a sliding scale, uh, depends on how carbon-free the production is. But these 
uh, credits can prove important, enabling heavy industry such as steel and cement and chemical and ammonia manufacturers uh, that require large quantities of process heat to begin to decarbonize their manufacturing process. Um, and this tax credit, which we're going to talk about in another podcast, is what's referred to as the carbon capture under Section 45Q of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. The other thing I wanted to highlight for our industrial listeners is the loans and loan guarantees that are in CHIPS as well as the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, so the Department of Energy's loan and loan guarantee programs have really been silent for much of the last 10 years. But that is going to change as the Inflation Reduction Act adds new lending authority to the loan guarantee program for innovative greenhouse gas reducing technologies and to the loan program for advanced vehicle manufacturing. We think about that, think about electric vehicles. Um, So uh, again, the loans and loan guarantee programs, very impactful to the industrial industry. And then the last comment I'd like to make is what I call indirect benefits for manufacturers. And so not all of the benefits to manufacturers under the Inflation Reduction Act come directly to the manufacturer. However, certain of the tax credits are structured in a way that is nevertheless nevertheless likely to produce indirect benefits. And I'll give you some examples tax credits for energy storage, combined heat and power systems and wind and solar facilities get a 10% plus up, as it's referred to, or an additional credit for domestic content. So there are also tax credits uh, for purchasing energy efficient products, such as doors and windows and heat pumps, very important to our manufacturers. So you may not be directly of the beneficiary, but you will be an indirect beneficiary as you manufacture these various windows and doors, in my example. Um, What is expected is this will all have a positive impact on the manufacturing sector um, by making the affected products more desirable to purchasers because of these credits while driving down the greenhouse gas emissions and other sectors of our economy. So in summary, um, in short, while manufacturing um, is not necessarily been the principal advertised focus of the Inflation Reduction Act, it was really more focused towards kind of the the clean energy credits. Um, There is much in the Inflation Reduction Act that'll help the industrial sector reduce its share of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions and significant incentives, significant reduction in costs through the loans and loan guarantee programs to really help advance the need uh, with respect to the industrial sector and the broader deployment of manufacturing sector in the United States. So, So a lot of really good news for our industrial clients. Yeah, Ron, just just listening to you, that was what I was going to uh, probably you said it better than I, w- I would have, but it was certainly going to be around. This is all positive news. Um, certainly the combination of loan guarantees and, and tax credits, um, it, all, all with the right intentions in mind, being that uh, we want the U.S. to be a leader uh, and certainly lead the um, you know, the carbon, net carbon, net zero carbon concept. So, um, so all very positive. Uh, and certainly we put our money where our mouth is uh, when it comes to all the incentives to do just that. So thinking through the money aspect of it and, and for our listeners who are looking at or, you know, looking at these opportunities and also trying to determine how they might monetize those in the short term. Um, why don't we pivot a bit and let's talk a bit about uh, just that, just how, how can our industrial uh, listeners monetize these en- energy credits uh, through what is uh, the new direct pay option, uh, as well as, again, a bit more on these credits? Uh, great question, Matt. Um, so there are really two new ways to to monetize really all these credits, uh, depending on whether it's a direct pay or a transferable credit. And we'll we'll define uh, first what what do we mean by direct pay um, option and and what in fact are those those eligible credits. So at a high level from a summary perspective, for tax years beginning after December 31, 2022, so January 1 of 23, 
and before January 1 of 2033 or December 31st of 2022, so at a 10-year period. The Inflation Reduction Act includes a new direct pay option whereby certain applicable entities can make an election that would treat such applicable entity as having made a tax payment equal to the value of the applicable tax credit that they have earned. And so they would otherwise be eligible to claim the, the credit. And, and this allows them simply to immediately get a direct pay uh, for that entity to, in essence, claim a refund, uh, attributable to excess taxes they paid or, or may have deemed to have been paid. So effectively, this option makes the applicable tax credits refundable tax credits with respect to the direct pay option. So that ultimately begs the question is, well, what is an applicable entity? And so for the purpose of this, quote, direct pay election, um, the term applicable entities includes only tax exempt organizations, a state or political subdivision thereof, the Tennessee Valley Authority, Indian tribal governments, uh, any Alaska native corporation, or any corporation operating on a cooperative basis, which is engaged in furnishing electrical energy to persons in, in what are referred to as rural areas. And, and so again, the direct pay option is available for those taxable entities through December 31st of 2032. Um, and in short, you know, taxpayers are considered applicable entities specifically in the event that uh, you, you have this quote, I'll say a cooperative basis in engaging in, you know, furnishing electrical energy to, 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 to persons. And so this is where in our next podcast, we'll also talk about uh, the 45Q because with respect to that new clean hydrogen production credit or the carbon capture credit under 645Q and the new advanced manufacturing credit, in these cases, uh, the direct pay option would be available only in the first five years after that project is placed in service. So I think under the direct pay, we're going to see a lot of our industrial clients look to take advantage potentially in building new facilities um, to capture the uh, credits, uh, in essence, the the eligible credits. And so, um, you know, a lot of really good news in there. So when we think about, quote, um, the domestic content requirement, um, remember that projects beginning construction after 2024 have to have either one, satisfying the domestic content requirement, or two, have a maximum net output of, of less than one megawatt to be eligible for a direct payment equal to 100% of the applicable tax credit. Um, so what you could find yourself uh, in a situation as an industrial client is actually looking to relocate maybe some of your manufacturing facilities um, so you can take advantage of the domestic content requirement. And then when we think about, a, quote, eligible credits, because that's really where the rubber hits the road or, or the refund comes into play in the direct pay, uh, applicable entities may elect to receive direct payments for the following credits, among others. Um, the ITC, so we talked about the investment tax credit, the PTC, the, the production tax credit. And again, these are for projects placed in service after December 31st, 2022. Uh, the carbon capture credit, which we'll talk about in our next podcast in 45Q, uh, for carbon capture equipment placed in service after December 31st, 2022. Uh, the zero emissions uh, what are referred to as nuclear power production credits under 45U and, and the clean hydrogen production credit under section 45V. And again, that advanced manufacturing production credit under 45X. And then again, the clean electricity production credit under section 45Y. Um, all of these are the eligible credits under what's referred to as, as uh, the direct pay. So really a lot of good news out there for our manufacturers or our industrial clients, specifically those that may be looking to relocate uh, uh, some of their manufacturing facilities or build new manufacturing facilities so as to take advantage of these direct pay options with respect to these new and eligible credits in the statute underneath the, the direct pay clause of the statute.
But in, in Ron, certainly to your comment, um, you know, we know a lot of uh, businesses and, and industrial companies we've been talking to are are thinking through general uh, supply chain movement, uh, facility movement, uh, as it relates to really the events of the past two and a half, three years. So uh, some of these credits only uh, support that thesis, thesis even further from a funding perspective. So uh, thank, thank you for that. That was very helpful. Um, certainly gives our listeners uh, some additional insight on, on the direct pay option as well as those what are eligible credits. Um, maybe another question that uh, would probably help our listeners is you know, thinking through these credits are, are, are they transferable? Maybe that's the general question. And, and so um, you kind of have two but almost one very large uh, list of credits that either qualify for direct pay and or can be what is referred to as transferable. So when you think about transferable, what we're really talking about is that a credit is sold to a third party. And so um, within the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, it provides that for taxable years beginning after December 31, 2022, Eligible taxpayers may transfer all or a portion of their eligible credits to a taxpayer that is not related to that transfer taxpayer. Again, they can sell their credits. So consideration for tra- for such transfer must be paid in cash, i.e. the sale. Um, and it's also it's not includable in the income of the transfer or taxpayer. It's also not deductible to the transferee taxpayer. Um, so it's a, a incentive that actually was somewhat buried in the Inflation Reduction Act to really create uh, a third party sales or transferable market for these type of eligible credits that we'll talk about. So um, again, the, the transfer election can be made annually um, and ultimately is due no later than the due date of the tax return for the relevant taxable year, uh, including extensions that we're talking about selling or transferring the credit. Um, It is important to note that the credit may not be transferred more than once. So if I have earned a credit and I've determined that I want to sell the credit and I sell it once, the credit cannot be resold uh, to quote the transfer E that acquired uh, the credit. Um, so that's an important aspect to, to consider out there for our industrial clients. Um, so let's move to now what I will refer to as kind of the, the quote, you know, eligible uh, taxpayers. So when we think about these third party sales or we're transferring, they are available to all taxpayers that are not tax exempt organizations. So compare that to the direct pay where we talked a little a lot about, you know, a tax exempt organization or a state or political subdivision, Tennessee Valley Authority, I mentioned, uh, Indian uh, Native tribal governments, uh, as well as Alaska Native corporations. So eligible taxpayers underneath the third party sales and or the transferable credits is all taxpayers that are not one of those that we cited in quote, the, the direct pay. Um, so eligible credits, let's let's talk about what is a transfer of an eligible credit. And, and I won't bore you with uh, internal revenue code citations, but I'll just give you some examples uh, of what is uh, a quote transferable or a credit that you may sell. So you may sell a business credit portion of an alternative fuel vehicle refueling property credit, um, the renewable electricity production credit, so um, the carbon oxide sequestration credit, uh, which we'll talk about in our next uh, uh, podcast, the zero emission nuclear power production credit, uh, the clean hydrogen production credit that can be earned by a manufacturer in regards to their manufacturing facilities. You also can transfer or sell the advanced manufacturing production credit. Um, you may sell the clean electricity production credit, the clean fuel production credit. Um, And that is not the extensive list, but it gives our listeners a sense of all of the eligible credits that are eligible to be sold in a third party transaction um, for cash. Um, And so it's going to create this domain 
um, of buyers and sellers of transferable credits. So it's uh, really a lot of exciting uh, news um, with respect to uh, our industrial clients to take advantage of not only earning, transferring or selling those credits for cash, which will create this this third market, which was very intentional in the Inflation Reduction Act. Ron, that was very helpful and certainly a couple pieces jump out there, but uh, understanding those those transferable credits and uh, obviously that limitation on one transfer is important for our listeners. Um, so it, it, kind of wrapping up the past two questions I asked, I mean, what's what's your perspective and, and obviously our firm's perspective on the direct pay and, and that transferable credit concept? Uh, so I think my perspective and, and uh, as well as CB's is that when you think about the direct pay and especially the third party sale provisions, it really provide an, an alternative market uh, for renewable energy developers and industrial clients, uh, manufacturers to monetize their tax credits without needing access to really what was referred to historically as the tax equity market. So in, in recent years, um, the developer and or manufacturers face challenges in some instances in securing tax equity investments for their projects, which ultimately put their projects financing and construction in jeopardy. And so this new monetization alternative could provide a much needed certainty for those manufacturers and, and developers in constructing their projects. And ultimately it will materially change the manner in which renewable energy components and manufacturers and energy projects are financed. I, I think these monetization alternatives, and, and again, especially the third party sale option, could ultimately and will ultimately expand the pool of potential investors that are going to want to invest in a manufacturing entity as well as in potentially a renewable energy a project. Now remember the backbone is the industrial industry because they're manufacturing all of the parts and components as I highlighted earlier that are ultimately used in kind of this clean energy uh, economy. Um, so these changes are going to allow investors such as private equity and investment funds, um, which traditionally were limited ultimately to investing in renewable projects um, to increase their participation in their, you know, quote, manufacturers of uh, renewable equipment and projects by ultimately allowing them to monetize their credits through these third party sales. Um, I think what's also going to happen is the availability of the direct pay election to tax exempt entities are going to further allow, and this has been often overlooked as a piece in the inflation reduction now, but the availability of the direct pay election to tax exempt entities is going to allow pension funds and universities and municipalities and investment in private equity funds um, with such tax exempt investors to really make some significant investments in manufacturing companies and in energy projects under certain conditions and arrangements um, that Terry Becker will, will be uh, ready, willing, and able to, to help structure. So those would be my insights when you think about direct pay and the third party or sales or the transferability of credits. It's, it's really gonna open up capital and the equity markets uh, to a level that we have never seen before in our country, uh, probably over the next 10 years. Thank you, Ron. That's very, very helpful and certainly a shared perspective there on the overall value here. Um, so recognizing today's been focused on the ways to monetize, and, and you've also given a little bit of a sneak preview around the credits, uh, around hydrogen and carbon capture and, and a couple other aspects. Uh, why don't we uh, maybe put out a uh, early high level summary on our next podcast on so number six in the series, which is going to touch on the carbon credits and, and 45Q uh, e even deeper. Uh, you want to you want to give a little high level summary on that for us? I'll just give a little high level summary and hopefully peak 
uh, our listeners' interest uh, so that they will definitely listen into uh, podcast number six, which is going to be about um, how can you monetize your carbon emissions with respect to your manufacturing facilities with respect to what's referred to as the 45Q tax credit. So there were changes in Section 45Q um, through ultimately uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, and it's going to drive uh, construction as well as manufacturers to build new facilities. And so what we're gonna talk about is carbon credits and how can they offset the carbon footprint. And specifically, we'll deal with what are what are carbon credits? Um, how does a carbon credit really work? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. Clean Air Act and how it folds into the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 and all of these new credits. And then ultimately, we'll talk to our industrial and manufacturing listeners. How do you monetize carbon emissions with the 45Q tax credit? when we're thinking about our manufacturing facility. Um, so that's a little sneak preview, and, and we hope that you will uh, tune in for, for podcast number six. Yeah, Ron, I'm certainly looking forward to, uh, to, to recording that podcast with you and touching on uh, exactly what you just shared. So uh, appreciate appreciate you giving that sneak preview. Um, so, you know, as, as we wrap up today, um, hopefully everyone's uh, gained some additional uh, insight on Again, the high level, the value of the CHIPS Act, the interaction with the IRA of 22, um, certainly more information on the 48C and 45X, as well as, again, a bit of an early sneak preview on 45Q, um, and, and ultimately ways that uh, our industrial uh, taxpayers here in the U.S. can, can monetize these energy credits as, as we move, uh, move through this uh, this next phase of growth here in the U.S. So, um, really appreciate all that insight. Um, you know, as, as noted, uh, we certainly have some trailing uh, podcasts. We'll have number six and number seven in this series. As Ron just highlighted, uh, the next number six will go into 45Q credit, and then number seven, uh, we're going to go a bit deeper into the technology neutral credit uh, that's going to be supporting and impacting the industrial industry. So um, for those of you, again, that are uh, repeat listeners, thank you for joining. For those of you that are new to our podcast, ho hopefully you enjoyed uh, and, and learned from this and, and we'll be going back to listen to previous podcasts and will join us for these trailing podcasts. So Ron, thank you again for joining us today and for all the insight. No, not a problem. And, and Matt, let me mention to the listeners uh, that along with our podcast are and is a thought leadership piece. Uh, that we have drafted, because um, we're really not able to cover everything in, in, a, in a podcast, but we hope those thought leadership pieces as well are educational and, and informative. Um, and we'd also encourage our listeners to give us feedback uh, to other podcasts that you might be interested in, whether it's the CHIPS Act, um, that obviously deals with the semiconductor industry and or uh, other areas that you'd like to uh, hear more about in a podcast. So we thank you for listening and taking time out of your busy day.